Hello people, this is Budridge and this is Luke Smith. Me and Luke, we are in sync now. It's really weird because I actually just recorded a video about Pulse Audio uh, and Alsa and also a little bit, a lot of ramblings about Jack but the video became too long and because this stuff is so weird, this uh, Pulse Audio and I was really 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 happy to see here now Luke just uploaded this um, an hour ago or something uh, and I, I was like oh no Luke will come here with his alpha take you know where pulse audio is just bloat we should all just use alsa bare bones alsa but he he makes the the correct um, um, analyze here of, of this situation that pulse audio is bloated yes but also is impossible to use because no one knows how it works anymore. It's uh, also is super weird. Now I'm not even going to try to explain what it is and how it works because I don't know. But it, it, it works, it exists. Pulse Audio uses also itself. Uh, what this video will really be about here is uh, I have found a really neat uh, thing. Check out my new Gen Monify modules here for volume, input volume and output volume. And here you can see the key bindings that I will press and stuff. So if I press this, super backslash, media control, volume plus two. And then you can see it. the volume changes up here. And it's really smooth. I, I can keep the key binding pressed down and it it just works really nice now Th this didn't work as well prior to this because I have found a new uh, way of doing this and that is what I want to show you and this also works um, it, it's like yeah it's a subscription program I guess I should say here that's hooked up uh, directly to uh, Pulse Audio and listening for Pulse Audio events. So you, you see, I don't even have to press a hotkey. Even if I change the volume here on this uh, slider, it also updates my XFC panel gen modify mo module there. Uh, and this method, it will, or the thing I will show you, it, it doesn't, it, it's related to Pulse Audio and not really to XFC panel or Gen Monify or anything. This this can be useful for anyone who want to monitor uh, Pulse Audio in one way or another. <clears throat> and the thing that started all of this was I I, I just found this uh, gist uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, someone called Jason White here uh, have uploaded just a single C++ uh, file here uh, called Pulse Test. I just found this because I searched uh, for like ways to subscribe to uh, Pulse Audio that isn't completely worthless, you know, and then I just just show, gave me this uh, search result to this uh, standalone GIST file. And as you can see, it's just uh, 250 lines of C++ and it also doesn't have any dependencies. This this is like awesome. I, I really like <laughs> seeing when C++ is used like this. Um, the only dependency is of course uh, Pulse Audio, it, but you got these uh, the libraries uh, that you need when you install Pulse Audio. I believe they also in, you you get the library files needed. So and this is what I use here, and it is uh, I think it even says so. Yeah, it was created for the possibility of having an automatically updating volume widget in a tiling window manager status bar. So we are uh, the, the target audience, so to speak. But this can be used for all kinds of stuff uh, related to this. Uh, but you might need to tweak uh, this program a bit. And I will show you how it works and how to find information about what's available and all kinds of things. So let's not talk so much about also, let's not talk about my audio hardware, which uh, the last video was like 30 minutes of me describing what kind of hardware I got, but uh, let's not talk about that. Let's instead uh, uh, look at this C++ program here. So what I will do, I will just grab this there, grabbed it, uh, and then we can move this uh, somewhere. Maybe we should... Uh, I don't know if this works. Maybe it works. T. 
tmp grabbed a pulse slash uh, p dot cc no that didn't work because the directory didn't exist what we do is we create a, a test directory here so tmp which is that is actually my desktop by the way so I got this directory called TMP and that is if I had a normal desktop environment where uh, with icons and stuff this is what my desktop would look like you know so uh, super cluttered with all kinds of jank uh, really so TMP PA jank Gina whatever I have created a directory it should be there it is now we can move this temporary file here to tmp pa gina gina and t.cc whatever didn't work okay what if i do this then tmp ct2 copy that paste it here you see GUI file managers let me close this oops didn't mean that I mean meant to close the project and then we create a new pro project called TMP PA Pina there Pina now we can rename it t.cc there perfect we got the t.cc file we got it here and in the top comment here is also a description on how to compile this c++ program uh, it almost works uh, out of the box here for some reason i don't know what this is about but remove this shell from from that stuff there and change this to the name of the file that we want to compile t.cc There, now we compile it, now we have a, a program, a binary. And if we run that binary, we get this. Now we have a subscriber thing here, listening for output volume changes. So if I change the volume, you see it also prints that now to standard out in our thing here. But it only listens for output volume this is my input volume now i don't want to change that too much here but just as an example here if, if i change the input volume you see it changes in the in the bar here but it doesn't change here because this only receives uh, output uh, events as it is now but i i modified this uh, for my own uh, thing here changed uh, a couple of things uh, and one was to also listen for input events <coughs> so let's uh, examine this uh, c++ uh, program a bit first here is a bunch of uh, uh, error testing things error checking whatever and starting the main loop and whatever or what what this is actually or maybe i shouldn't try to explain how c++ works since i <laughs> shouldn't just do that because i don't know but uh, this is actually a class uh, uh, in the program a class called pulse audio is created and the main function of the program is at the bottom here it's just this thing here that uh, yeah emits uh, the, the class kind of uh, so it uses a lot of internal, like here for example, pa underscore context. This is like a function, but this function is not defined anywhere in this program. It's actually defined in, uh, uh, or it's declared in pulseaudio.h here, the library file. <laughs> so it uses uh, a lot of, of pulse audio. Uh, specific functions you know helper functions or whatever you want to call them uh, the critical part here is here we can see this is 
uh, when it prints the volume. It just uses a printf to print the volume and also test if it's muted, then it prints the, the word muted in parentheses. This is what uh, is printed when you first start the program. It also prints the name of the default sync. And sync is like pulse audio language for output. It's super weird, but that's how it is. So we can see that this is this is what's printed then, and that's only printed one time. <coughs> Called when the server is ready. Uh, but this wasn't what I was looking for. I was looking for this. This is the important part here, or one important uh, vital uh, part, we could say. PA subscription mask sync. That's an enum here, right here. Uh, a mask, some kind of a mask. And this, this tells uh, um, our Pulse Audio subscription thing here what type of events we are listening for. Right now, it only listens for sync events. So if I would change this to source instead. Maybe do this so we get a little larger there. Then we need to compile it again. And run it again. <clears throat> and now, if I uh, raise the output volume, you see we don't get any uh, output. But when I change the input volume, we do get uh, do get uh, 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 something happening. But it crashed actually, and I know why it crashed, don't worry. Uh, because this is not enough here for this script, but it, because the next function, it handles uh, this, uh, these subscription playbacks here. Here it's defined what, uh, or declared what the function to use as a callback function when <coughs> the subscription mask uh, hits a target or whatever. <coughs> And then it goes into this function here, uh, where there is a, a switch uh, thing testing if uh, the facility, meaning the type of event here, uh, if that is PA subscription event sync, do this. Uh, but if it's a different type of event, assert zero, meaning uh, this basically means crash. Assert is like Test test if this is true and zero is always false so that it will then it will yeah you will get a crash like we got here assertion zero failed it always fails uh, but the, how the the program was from the start here when it had sync here it should always uh, always have a sync event so this shouldn't happen and it's a good way to write it like this so, because then you really know something weird happened. <coughs> What we want to do here is add one case for source events also. As also, pay attention here. These are not exactly the same thing. This is the mask and this is the event it's called. So this is, yeah, they are not exactly the same thing. Now it should actually work, but now it will print the, the output information. Uh, I didn't change that here, so... Well, we have to compile it. Compile, run, changing output, nothing happens. Sh changing input, nothing happens. Yeah, maybe it doesn't work because, yeah, it, it got PA context sync info. What we do is uh, we change this to source. Then we change this to source, and this is a, a, a function in the script, or this is a function in the script. So now we need to create this source info callback, and that is uh, the function that printed uh, the stuff here. So we can just copy this, add it here, and then we change that to source. And now it should actually work. No. 
400 missed something source source info callback static void source info callback huh. there changing output nothing happens changing input now we get the input change displayed but now we don't get the output displayed so next step here and this is something i it took some time for me to realize how to do this but it's easy because we want both masks here we want both source subscription and sync uh, subscription and these are masks uh, so what that usually means is that they are uh, uh, specific bits uh, in in a set in in a probably a 32 bit uh, number and that most of the time means that you can just mask them with a bitwise or like this and then you will get a combination of uh, well it you will get a number where uh, uh, the bits in this mask are, is set and the bits in this mask is also set a, co a combination but this doesn't work if i try to compile this now we get an error it says uh, something wrong with the types and stuff yeah we try to make an int out of when it suspects a type looking like this a pa subscription mask underscore t so what you do here is you just recast our number here into the type that we want the, the, the program is really ugly here uh, because because of this we should probably do this on a separate line as a but whatever uh, this should work there it worked and now pulse test changing output get output changing input get input perfect really nice huh uh, but i would also like to change a couple of more things here uh, and this is quickly done now uh, one is i would like a like a more uh, strict output uh, something on the lines uh, well my own version of this i guess i have it running here it looks like this and this is what i want now uh, as well so if i change uh, output we can see it's a out the volume no uh, stupid percentage symbol then it also prints the name of the sound card uh, that is producing this volume because that is uh, kind of useful then it also prints here the number the pulse audio number of that sound card that isn't really useful so we don't need that in our example and i will also remove it from my own thing here and it also prints if i mute also prints muted as a last argument here so i would like something like this out volume name of the card uh, don't print this but print muted if it's muted so we just change this uh, output uh, printers here the printfs so this is sync i would have rather have that saying out then this weird thing here that is uh, 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 yeah it denotes to print a, a floating point number but not really sure why it needs to be that but it is and then two percentages like this that means uh, well these these it is that is the actual percentage here we don't i don't want that then i don't want a space then i want the card so per percentage s again and then we want muted so now uh, we have added one more argument to our printf uh, format string here <clears throat> before muted after the volume and you can see the commas here maybe we should do it like this to, just to make it more clear here what's going on so there are three 
different uh, or two different arguments right now to this printf uh, format stream but it needs three the third one or the second one <coughs> I fig figured this out by, by just testing stuff here because I that is refer referring to uh, yeah here we can see I and then uh, the volume property of, of this or volume property but this I is a pointer and this refers to a property of that pointer or something like that whatever who cares here I arrow volume will give, give us a volume I mute will give us a boolean probably mute state because this is like a, an a tenary expression here so if this is true then it will print this if this is false it will print this <clears throat> so I mute probably returns a boolean but if we change this to I name uh, then it will print the name of the card I hope I believe compile run again yeah now we can see we've got some different output here I raise the output volume I also have it muted so if I remove that now it says this and this is good this is good enough for me but uh, the input volume now that still get printed like this so all we need to do is add like the same thing for printf or for, for this guy maybe th this could be done uh, in a smarter way with less uh, code application but whatever let's keep it or I, I guess it isn't keeping it simple but whatever you you get my point <clears throat> let's do it like that all right all right and how can this be used now well now it says out on both of these we don't want that we want it, want it to say in so we can also so we know what's what is what out in out in good old in out Um, okay okay so how can this be turned into cool icons in my bar you might ask it's very simple now we just hook this up uh, to a, 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 a bash script and it's good to separate this and just having this C++ thing here doing this one single thing reporting about this we could in theory uh, add like update the gen modify modules and add things like that to this script but in my opinion it's better to do that in a in a bash script instead uh, and I have tested this a bit it, it also it runs really nice this uh, compiled C++ program it doesn't consume anything I tried to stress it a lot and added more uh, uh, more events to, to react on and things like that it, it works really really well this uh, because what I did in my old setup before I found this script and I, I found it like yesterday what I usually uh, have done in the past is using pulse audio comes um, uh, by default with this program PACTL which you can use to yeah send commands to pulse audio or uh, request information it, it is a bit like i3 message um, so you can for example do this list short sources and then it will print a list of um, available sources I think this is just one single source actually just so much information no it's two two of them <coughs> hmm. it's kind of weird that that one is there but whatever you can list sources you can list sinks you can list cards you can list uh, all kinds of things and here you can see all the available uh, cards and these are the same as you can see if you have power control for example these are here we also have four different cards here we have four different cards I think I would make a separate video on this uh, on, on how, how to use this in a more advanced way because we, we actually don't need to use this at all now but I just wanted to show you that you can also do this PACTL subscribe and then you get one of these uh, classic subscription things you know 
it actually works uh, just as uh, our C++ program does, but the output is completely useless. So if I raise volume now, I get this. I get four lines of just cryptic nonsense here. Decrease the volume, mute the volume. You see, now I muted the volume. There's no way to tell that the volume got muted here. So what you have to do if you use this as the subscription uh, method here, is that every time you find a change on a sync, for example, then you have to look up, okay, what is this sync really? Okay, so that sync is my headphones, okay. What is the volume of the headphones? That's a different command. And then you check the volume, and then you have to check if that is muted or not. And all of this in a bash loop, uh, constantly running, and most of the time, or not most of the time, but often, in the end, you will find that, no, not, the, the volume hasn't actually changed. Because this also gets activated if, um, now I muted the volume here, but I have um, a podcast play uh, pause here. If I start this podcast, you see I also got uh, uh, a change on the sync, just because I started this, because then I hooked a client up to the sync, and that also counts as an event that looks exactly the same as if the volume would have changed, and stuff like that. So, but I actually use this uh, PACTL uh, subscribe thing to, to update my, my old modules in my polybar. And it kind of worked, but it was very, or, or no, it was actually quite demanding on resources since I had to do so many more things on every input here. Now when we got our custom C++ thing here, we don't have to look up anything. We know, okay, it is the output, it, this is the volume, it is muted, this is, the, this is the card. And what I use this card for is I actually change these icons depending on what card uh, I use. So, and I have created a script. This, this script I will not show you in this video how that works because that, it's... Uh, Kind of a different story, but I have this PA profile. If I execute that, it will toggle between my two uh, preferred profiles here. There, it also by default it always uh, mutes the microphone when I run this PA profile, and I kind of want that. I rather have my microphone being muted one time too many than the other way around. Uh, I also have it set up so it unmutes the microphone every time recording starts. And I guess I could hear whatever. I could set it up so it wouldn't mute the microphone if I am recording. That is not impossible to do either, but whatever. Uh, I have to unmute this. Now you can see the icon here is a pair of headphones. And if I run this PA profile again here, Now it's a speaker. If I run again, now it's a headphones. If I run again, now it's a speaker. And it actually changes here uh, the sound cards when I toggle this. Uh, these two sound cards that I actually use all the time here are, are external USB sound cards. And they are only available for me when my computer is docked in its docking station. So as soon as I dock uh, uh, and not using the docking station, then these cards will not be available. And then I have a third profile that uses the built-in audio and set uh, like uh, uh, input output uh, to, to those. And I also make sure to turn off all cards that I don't uh, use. And um, I know that Luke actually mentioned that in this video, I, I gave him a, a hint, a comment about it, that uh, this is something that he have found is annoying because sometimes when you start a recording, I, I have noticed this myself also, that sometimes Pulse Audio just decides that, uh, hey, maybe you should use the built-in microphone today when you record, you know, uh, and things like that. And sometimes the recording doesn't work because sometimes it enables two microphones at the same time and just nothing works and things like that. With this uh, thing here, I, I have a strict way of, of controlling uh, uh, what, uh, what outputs and inputs I, I actually use. And there's also one third uh, or fourth uh, profile here that's called Jack. Jack. It's just called Jack. And that actually disables all uh, the, the sound cards in Pulse Audio. 
it starts the jack server and it also hooks up uh, pulse audio with jack and makes like uh, pulse audio a client of jack because that means then i can add uh, uh, clients like chrome or vivaldi or whatever they become clients as normal to pulse audio which in turn just redirect everything to jack it's it's kind of super cool but I am still not 100% sure how all of that works and it, it it's currently in the state of sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. So that video have to wait. But maybe we can take a quick look at uh, how to write a bash script to update uh, modules like this um, with the output of our C++ pulse test thing here. Uh, it's actually quite easy and fast to do so let, let's do it now at the end of the video But if you're not using XFCE or whatever or not interested, I, I hope you found this um, C++ uh, thing Useful because there are really no good um, All of these built-in uh, Same with with polybar polybar have like built-in audio modules, but I would like like individual ones that uh, clearly shows when something is muted and not then whatever. So I think this is the best solution and, and now it actually works really well here now with this, this method. So let's create a bash script here. We just call it uh, Yenmon updater upd.sh bin bash echo hello and then I think I need to cancel my own because th this is my um, this is a bash script that is running in a terminal that th that is the script that updates uh, these icons so if I would close this now if I update change the volume here the volume will change in pulse audio but it doesn't update uh, the, the just doesn't update the, these uh, bar things here so we need one thing here before we start is uh, the path to our our compiled program here so let's just write the full pa path here uh, this can of course be uh, achieved in different ways but let's just do it like this so we can call this uh, PT and then we do a while read or do done we take the input from yeah this is now where we need to do that uh, how is it now I have to cheat I have to cheat because I never remember this we have to use this standard buff ol there and we take the output of pulse no, of pt And we make our uh, uh, bash script here executable schmod plus x yen mon there and then we can execute it syntax error yeah, yeah, yeah. ah there now it works because now it just uh, echoes the reply and reply is a default variable uh, or a built-in variable to read uh, containing the last uh, red uh, yeah reply which in this case is the last red line if I remove this standard buff thing there then it will kind of not work now I'm changing the volume but nothing is happening and what this does is that it flushes the buffer after each uh, output uh, it is kind of weird uh, we could also add this to 
to have our C++ program do this automatically, but I couldn't get that work perfect. So whatever, we, we use this method here. Maybe someone knows uh, the best way to do that uh, in the, the script uh, immediately. Yeah. Yeah, I made a comment on some Graham Parson uh, video uh, when I had my Graham uh, Parson week a couple of weeks ago. Okay, okay, okay. So we want to update these uh, Genmon modules here. We need to know the name of the modules and I can see that by doing this. This one is called Genmonify. Mon gen modify o vol out and then we can just assume that the other one is called vol in yes and i made a different uh, a video just a couple of like a week ago about what this gen modify uh, stuff is it's my own custom uh, xfce taskbar hook module thing um we can also copy one of these outputs here, so we know what we are working with. What I like to do is uh, create a, a regular expression. And another thing I like to do when I, when I create regular expression in Bash is to create these helper variables here because if you have used a regular expression uh, then in many languages uh, to uh, to note that you want to uh, match a space you can write backslash s is usually space and backslash capital s is anything that is not a space this isn't available in bash uh, regex instead you have to write a full character class like this we, and since we have a lot of spaces and stuff here, uh, it gets really ugly with all of these space groups. Now we can instead uh, write them as dollar uh, $s and dollar capital $s, meaning it's the same thing as backslash s and, and not, you know. So first we got out or in. That's a group. Then we got a space. Then we got uh, the volume, which is a number between 0 and 9. One or more of those numbers, please. And we got a space. And then we got uh, the name of the card. And that is uh, not space. One or more of those, please. Well, I guess we could even, we don't even need a character class. We can just do this. Perfect. One or more not space characters, meaning this whole thing here. Then we actually have a trailing space on all lines. Even if we don't uh, have the muted uh, word, there is always a trailing space, I believe. Um, so we need to add that. But then we have the optional. We should change this. I don't want it as it is now. I don't want it to say, uh, yeah, well, here, no. Yeah, let's remove this space here, and then we say muted. I think this just is simpler. Now we need to compile it again. And G++, I think you can write GCC here as well. You just It's just common practice. I th or maybe I should shut up here, I, I'm not sure. But I think it, it, it uses uh, the GNU C compiler. And you write this, maybe you also give it some C++ uh, special uh, options when you use this. Um, okay, maybe we should also do it here. You see how fast it is to compile, 180 milliseconds. So when, when, when your C++ works like this, then, then it's actually quite uh, comfy to work with. But it uh, very quickly becomes crazy and takes very long time to compile and it's not fun at all. But whatever, that's a different uh, 
different topic. Uh, then we have muted here. And muted, sometimes it's there and sometimes it isn't. So one or more of the previous item. And the previous item is the group with the uh, content muted. This regular expression should uh, match the output here. You see, now I can just write it like this, RE, that will take this regular expression. It's also nice, I have found, to, to do it like this with bash, write the regular expression outside of the test and then uh, link it with a variable like this. Um, if that is true, and, and we can test it by echo bash rematch two, which should be the volume. Save that on our bash scripts. Now it says 93, because that is the output volume. I uh, decrease the volume. And I always decrease with 2% here because I like that. It works, it works, it works. And if I change the input volume, it prints that. Mm -mm -mm. So here it can be a good idea to do this. Uh, you can say type is equal to bash rematch one and that is in or out then we have vol is equal to this then we have name i'm not sure if it is the card name or the sync and source name or whatever let's just call it name um, uh, bash rematch three um, and then we have mute, which we could do this with instead. We can say bash rematch four colon plus one, meaning that mute this variable will be one if this is set. Or maybe that doesn't work. No, oh, let's let's just use this. So mute will be muted if it is muted. Okay. And remember my Yenmon modules, they were called um, vol in and vol out. So is a module is equal to vol and then we have type lowercase uh, uh, and modify module module Vol increase output volume. You see, it already works. Input volume it already works. One thing to note here is that it it seems to it updated uh, the output volume immediately when we started the script, but the input volume we had to change it before it it uh, updated it. And that is. I found this uh, being default sync name. Yeah, then it prints this and then it do out here. I think when if we add a source here.
source. No, didn't like that. Not sure if we need this. Ah, I default source source. There, run it, and now it prints both in and out there. And that's good because then that means that when we run our script, it will update both of these guys instantly. When we run it, we don't even have to get an event. That's great. Okay, now to the fun part, you know, the icons. Uh, I found the icons uh, using the icon browser. And then yeah here we can see in volume you got some some nice ones i use this for microphone muted um i use uh, this one for internal the laptop speakers they have this icon uh, no matter what output i have i always have this audio volume muted as icon for that and then you can also search here for for example audio and there i found heads headphones i use that for headphones or yeah, yeah, for the headphone, sound card, whatever. Uh, and I use this for uh, microphone. And these when I have my speakers, my external speakers, not the internal laptop uh, sound card. Um, and I also use a, a one external icon uh, when I when it's plugged into Jack. I use a it's an application uh, icon for Q Jack CTL. I don't think you can see that here. No this icon browser kind of sucks but whatever i use those icons i found them with with the icon browser but let's just copy copy the icon list from my old script here maybe since we are keeping it simple now let's uh, let's uh, skip all of these extra jack and these two guys so it's either a microphone or it's a speaker and it's muted or medium yes correct then i guess we can call this out instead so in this setup that we have now, we don't really care about these sound cards now. Uh, I feel it, it gets a bit uh, overkill for this video. Uh, but then you could just compare, are we using uh, the Music Streamer 2, then use the speaker icon. Uh, if output is uh, 80-20-20, then use the headphone icon. And, and that is what I did basically, but let's skip that now. And instead just uh, using in and out and, and changing if it's... Uh, 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 muted or not so or let's make it lowercase here since we're using lowercase everywhere else maybe i should have lowercase in the output i just whatever there so type is that and then we have icon is equal to uh, um, and this, by the way, is an whoops, is an array. So we should declare that as an associative array here. Icons icons type and then here. I guess we should do this if bash rematch 4 has a value or I guess we can do mute has a value if that has a value then we add underscore mute okay icon Icon. There, we got the icons. I mute. It's muted. I mute the microphone. It's not muted. 
it works. This is uh, how simple you can work with this uh, stuff here. And you don't have a loop anywhere really. Sure, this is a loop, but it only, it, it sleeps uh, forever until it gets uh, uh, output from our uh, PT script here. Maybe we should also, this, some people might get confused here by doing this, so. We are actually executing this command here. It's not a file or anything, we are executing a command. Uh, and we make the output of that command will become a file here, basically, for, for us. I think it might work to do this. I, I try not to do this. Uh, pipe into while because it sometimes is just unreliable but this might work yeah it works so yeah you could also write like this this first line here that comes from the c++ program uh, mm -mm, not sure where it is but somewhere yes this one is not needed Pulse audio connection established. I don't want that. I don't want that output. Connection pulse audio terminated. Here it is. It prints this to standard error, so it's not handled by our program or anything. But whatever. Let's let's just remove that. Okay, we are C program C++ programmers now. That's what we do. Um, and you know what this script does? Uh, the gen modify script. Module. If I do vol in, then we will get this. It just outputs, uh, cats out a file. And that file contains this 96 and the icon information. And this command is also what uh, vol in here. That is what that command executes uh, on a timer. And that, but that timer is set to 86,400 seconds. So it only updates uh, one once every 24 hours. Uh, and when it updates, it executes this exact command here that I did here, meaning it will just cut out this file and that in turn will create, uh, make this thing know what to display here. Uh, but there is a way, and that is what GenModify does. It, it, uh, it will ping, ping this module to uh, uh, execute the command, uh, even if the timer is, hasn't run, run out yet. So it, uh, it will uh, automatically uh, first it creates this file, then it pings uh, the module, run your command again, it runs the command, which cats the file that has already been created now, and that updates everything. And it's all happening very fast, so this is a very lightweight uh, uh, way of doing this. It is a bit involved. There are quite a lot of, of uh, parts here now. It might look super complicated here. You have to rewrite a C++ program, uh, compile that, and then somehow run that with this strange standard buffer, then set up your gen modify, but it isn't that, that weird. Uh, it isn't more weird than writing uh, um, any other kind of, of status bar indicators. Only difference is that this is uh, super efficient. I'm using that here as well to display the title. I'm using it for the media playback as well. All right, all right. Um, yeah, I think this is great stuff. This Pulse uh, C++ Pulse Audio thing here. I'm not sure. Look at this public domain license. Beautiful. So I think I will add. Um, I think I will add all my. Um, Pulse Audio uh, stuff like these things, at least uh, what, what I use to update the bar and my mod modified version of this and uh, also the next script here. And I think we, we, we could even make a, a separate video about that because I think it's a useful, very useful information in that as well. And something that I didn't really see uh, 
uh, many using or maybe not even knowing about how to force uh, Pulse Audio to use uh, uh, a specific profile for the different sound cards and stuff. It's not that difficult to set up that either, but there it gets very much into the territory where, uh, yeah, I want this setup, uh, but someone else wants a different setup. It all depends on what kind of hardware you got and, and needs and, and all kinds of stuff. But it can still be interesting, I think, just to see how I have set up my system uh, or how I like it to be for me. So, and then you could just adjust it to how you would like it. Uh, but till then, I say thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye bye bye.